frankly, I felt great. You know, again, I had some high hematocrit symptoms going in there, probably mm-hmm. from prop, daily prop. And the whole winter, I've not been able to really do cardio. I probably should at the gym. I'm just not. Right. Um, <laughs> right. Come on. You watch my channel. You got to do the daily cardio, man. Like, let's talk about hematocrit. Like, you know, I mm. haven't had to to do a phlebotomy or to donate blood the entire mm-hmm. time that I've been on TRT until recently. So my, uh, my hematocrit got to, f- it was, uh. yeah, God, it was 49, seven in the last two weeks. And then finally I tested it. I, I what's today? Uh, Wednesday. So I tested it, I think Friday or something mm-hmm. and it was over range and I actually started feeling it and started feeling mm-hmm. a little bit lethargic, but mostly just like that kind of, um, you know, head pressure feeling where you somewhat feel like heavier, you know, your chest feels a little heavier that, that, mm. that very common kind of, um, you know, hematocrit like thing, like where you you're know fucking, what fixes that you feel your heartbeat. It's like insane. It's- yeah. I mean, water, right. He can only drink so much. <laughs> and, and I, and I was certainly doing it. I even started, uh, eating a grapefruit a day and then just dosing mm-hmm. the, the chemical version of that, this naringin stuff. And it didn't yeah. seem to move. I didn't really give it long, but, take, takes mean, takes two or three months. Yeah, it takes two or it, three months. It looks like it, it may take some time for that, right? So, uh, so it's like it's entirely possible that you know hematocrit is jumping past a reasonable range in in a bullus injection, and then it's just kind of going back down in the yeah. That could be the oh, case. Yeah, you know, so it's something no, that you know. No, it's not that hematocrit stays like. Red blood cells have like a 90 day to 110 like day, stay give or take. Elevated, yeah. yeah, it stays elevated. So hematocrit doesn't go up fast and doesn't come down fast unless you're overhydrated or dehydrated. Right. Um, Interesting. Then it, then it might change like two or three points at maximum. Right. But what, what you did say, like a bolus injection of testosterone, of course, that's a lot of influx of androgens. Yeah. And they, that's very erythropoietic. So that works, yes. you know, on, on the kidneys and the bone marrow to, to produce more red blood cells. So yes, that could be the, the needle mover because yep. if you suddenly have so many androgens in the system i mean this is why they prescribe oxymetolone at like 100 to 500 milligrams per day just to get the yeah. red blood cell as up as fast as possible in, in yeah. uh, aplastic anemia patients yeah um so if you do bolus injections um it could result in a higher hematocrit yeah and and if you were to take um you know grapefruit or, or naringenine or uh, what is it bergamotin another extract, a uh, flavonoid extract from grapefruit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then yeah, over time your hematocrit can come down, but the, the reducing the production of additional red blood cells, whatever red blood cells are there, it just takes time before they're, yeah. they die. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, that's why the therapeutic phlebotomies are, 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 are useful for guys on tier two, so long as you're not doing yeah. them a lot. Like I did my first one yesterday and, uh, you know, How's I, I got to say, what? How's your arm? How's your I, you arm? Know, Did it, butcher it's, it? actually, it's a little sore. Like they, 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 they don't, they don't care. She's just like, pff, she just stabbed it in there, <laughs> rips it out when, when she was done. I was like, okay, okay, joy. Thanks joy. So, but like, you know, I was a little freaked out going in there. Like, cause I fucked the last time I gave blood was like in the military. I, I really don't remember. Mm. So I'm like, um, how am I going to feel if I start getting weird? You know, they're going to give me some apple juice or whatever. Frankly, I felt great. Um, you know, again, I had some high hematocrit symptoms going in there, probably mm-hmm. from prop daily prop. Uh, yeah. and, and the whole winter I've not been able to really do cardio. I probably should at the gym. I'm just not, um, <laughs> Ryan, come on. You watch my channel. You got to do the daily cardio. I, I, you know what, man, I got to, I got to get back on it. And now I am cause it's nicer here and whatever. So, mm-hmm. uh, I'm doing it. I'm walking, but, um, <clears throat> I honestly felt great. Like I, I didn't feel wacky at all. I, I got out of there and actually felt better, you know, some mm-hmm. of the excessive heartbeat and some of the other weird shit that was happening from hematocrit just pretty instantly resolved. Yeah. Yeah. And it could be high blood pressure or again, the, the, the lack of oxygen carrying capacity because yeah. it kind of interferes with each other, but yeah. usually like if you're fully hydrated then you maybe use some blood pressure medication or the high dose magnesium or Cialis, Tomasartan, right? Mm. Um, for athletes, for most guys actually feel better when their hematocrit is like 52, 54. And right. that's slightly yeah. super yeah, physiological. It's so low for them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I honestly have the best performance when my hematocrit is 56. It's a 56. bit risky. Wow. It's a bit risky, but yeah. yeah, now it's, now it's 42. After a year off TRT, it's 42. I'm gasping for air after a leg day. It's, 
it's insane. I'm like, Ugh. interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Like when it was creeping up there, like it probably at its highest point, there was one. There were a couple nights where I was like so energetic. I went to the gym for the second time, and I thought my performance was crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I would. I'm I'm the guy stomping around as if I had just sucked down two pre workouts, running from like <laughs> set to set. People were like, "What right. the fuck is wrong with this guy?" Um, but yeah, imagine, it, I mean, um, you know, it could have been the extra hematocrit. <laughs> Imagine if it's 60, that's what the cyclists have. They, <sighs> yeah, they have it 60 year round. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big difference, man. From 50 to 60 is a huge difference. You just yeah. have unlimited energy. And then you combine it with methylene blue and then, but a high dose methylene blue, like we just discussed, I mean, a high dose yeah. methylene blue is a great way to bring your hematocrit down. Yeah, I did not know um, that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's poorly documented, but of course, methylene blue was one of the first uh, malaria medications. And you can see that in the literature. That, that as a long-term treatment against malaria, that hematocrit and robots are count to slowly come down. And I recently have been seeing that during blood work consultations um, because all these endurance athletes, they want to optimize mitochondrial function and methylene blue is such a great oxy oxygenator um, and a performance enhancer. But then over time, it kind of bites you in the ass because over 10 milligrams, 25 milligrams per week or per day, um, and it initially you have performance boost and then your hematocrit just comes down. Mm, so mm -hmm. it, it could be a viable option yeah. um, to occasionally run methylene blow to bring your hematocrit down with a couple of points. And yep. then you don't need to donate blood. Right. Did you did you work out after donating blood already? Or no, not I noticed it, and they were like, hey, you know, you probably shouldn't lift anything heavy today. Interestingly, Steve, before I went, because uh, I, I didn't plan on going and then my schedule kind of changed and it worked mm. for me to go. I went mm. on a two mile walk in, in uh, the North Shore of Pittsburgh. So like I had gotten some mm. cardio in and I was like, shit, should I go? And I went and I ended up feeling fine. But she's like, don't don't go home and do exercise, you know, make sure, you know, you're replenishing your plasma. So get the liquid in as, as much as you can over the next 24 hours. And then, you know, probably give it about 24 hours before you go lift weights. So yeah. I didn't listen this morning. I went to the gym and I, I felt <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So but we're usually with the bodybuilders when they do a therapeutic phlebotomy or uh, blood donation, they, they notice quite a performance reduction. Yeah. Um, so I always tell them to schedule it over the weekend when you have at least two days off. And then yeah. by the time you're going for, Another workout and your blood volume, my blood plasma levels have been restored. Right. But then you might still reduce or have a slight reduction in performance because the yeah, oxygen I've... carrying capacity is just not there. Right. And of course, yeah, you can take like a... uh, inositol tri ITTP. What is it called? That's a long one. That's one of the long yeah. ones. <laughs> inositol triphosphate. Yeah, is I it? Think, I think that's the one. Oh, maybe that's the wrong one. There's there's another know. one. It increases the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin. Yeah, it's a little okay. bit hard to source. Yeah. So your your hematica doesn't go up, but the amount of oxygen in the blood is actually enhanced. Right. That sounds like yeah. a, a good hack. 